Wait, what the real meaning of Christmas? It's the celebration of Jesus' birthday. How could my birthday daddy look kind of like that? Hmm, good question. That's just the big kids in their Bible school. Like that. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward ever forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So what does it mean by the government? So the government was the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire started as a small republic country in around 753 BC with Julius Caesar at power. And um, around 66 BC, General Pompey captured uh, Jerusalem and Judea. And around 6 BC, Julius gets killed. And right after, Caesar Augustus becomes power and he finally names Roman the Empire. And around 3 BC, Herod becomes king of the Jews. Jesus was born around 1 AD, then he was crucified between 30 and 36 AD. Then the Roman Empire became Christ Christian with Emperor Con Constantine in power. Then around 1453 AD, the fall of the Roman Empire be began. Wow, so many events to keep track of. But how is the Roman Empire part of God's plan? So when the Roman Empire was in power, everyone, including the Jews, um, they had to learn Greek. So when Jesus told his disciples to like go spread the gospel, they didn't have to like find a translator. They already knew Greek, so that's how the word of God spread so fast. Who knew a small, small republic country would turn into a huge empire ruling almost 21% of the world? Now let's go back and talk about what happened before Jesus was born. So before Jesus was born, Caesar gave out this decree saying that everyone must go to their hometown where they were born. So Mary and Joseph, being good citizens, they went to Bethlehem, where they were born. And so from Jerusalem to Bethlehem was about six miles. Guys, we need to back up a little bit. You guys missed a very important part. Before Caesar gave the decree, there was another event that happened. It talks about it in Luke 1, 28 through 30. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God gave him the throne of his ancestor David. That is where it talks about the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary in Nazareth. And he told her that she would have a very special baby. That was before she was married to her fiance, Joseph. She must have been so surprised and scared because she was so young. Some people believe that she was between 12 and 16 years old. That is very young. If God chose her to be his son's mother, then she must have been a humble, reliable young woman. But when Mary agreed to be the mother of Jesus, Joseph was a little bit unsure about it and wanted to let Mary go. But the same angel Gabriel appeared to him also. Actually, it talks about it in Matthew 1, 20-21. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. This is where the story continues with Caesar's decree. At this point, Mary and Joseph were already married, and Mary was about to have her baby very soon. 
But the law was the law, and they had to make the trip to Bethlehem. Did you guys know that the population of Bethlehem right now is 29,000 people estimated? Back in Jesus' days, the population was only 400 people. That is 10 times smaller than Sheraton. During Jesus' time, there was no inns or a hotel. People actually had special guest rooms in their houses. So when a traveler came to Bethlehem uh, for the census, they went around knocking on doors to see if they had a guest room uh, they could uh, be in. That must have been stressful for Joseph. If the town was so small, they probably asked every single house there. How sad it must have been to be turned away at every house. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, was not born in any castle or inn. It was a small, dirty stable crowded with animals. So why was he born in a manger? Because of us. Our hearts were once filled with filth and dirt and crowded with things of this world. Yes, he doesn't care who we were, he only cares who we become. But he must be born in our hearts. And because Jesus was born in our hearts, he can bring us out of the filthy stable and into the kingdom of God. I think we all would want to help out, especially if we knew it was Jesus' parent. For sure. So that night when Mary and Joseph were staying with the animals at someone's house, the shepherd had their own animals to tend to. I'm sure there were lots of different herds throughout the land, but these shepherds were special. What makes them so special? These shepherds were watching their herd more than likely somewhere between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, which is only six miles apart. These guys took extra care of their sheep because when people wanted to come to the temple in Jerusalem to bring a sin offering, they would stop by these shepherds to buy a sacrificial lamb for themselves. Since they sold sacrificial lambs, they had to be very careful with them to make sure it didn't have any bumps or bruises or anything wrong with it. That's why they wrapped the sacrificial lamb in swaddling clothes when they sold them to the buyer. Not only that, they must have been pretty religious themselves to know exactly what and how to care for a lamb that the sacrifice would be pleasing to God. In Luke chapter 2 verse 9 through 18 it says, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in the manger. And suddenly was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, and they said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7, it says, For unto you a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Can you see how God planned out everything so perfectly? The shepherds who sold sacrificial lambs that atoned of the sin of people. These same shepherds were now able to tell everyone of the true Lamb of God born as a baby and wrapped in those special swaddles. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. What does it mean by they were from the east? Based on the gifts that the wise men gave, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, meant that they were most likely from the ancient Arabian kingdom of Sheba. 
Numbers 24, 17 says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab, and break all the sons of Seth. So how did the wise men know to look for the star? The wise men knew to look for a star, because as the verse says, there shall come a star out of Jacob. Knowing a star will come, when they first saw the star, they knew it was a sign that the Messiah was born. I'll be reading Matthew 2, 6. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. How did the wise men know to go to Jerusalem? The wise men did not know that the king of the Jews would be born in Bethlehem. They knew that he would be born somewhere in Israel, so they went to the most logical place, the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. All of this was enough evidence for both the wise men and King Herod to know that something important has happened. The Messiah is here. Matthew chapter 2 verse 10 says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with his mother Mary, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There was two things that the wise men did. They worshipped the baby and gave him gifts. Exactly, but why did they worship a baby and give such extravagant gifts to a young child? It's very interesting because the Bible does say that they, number one, received the sign from heaven, number two, heard the word from the scripture, number three, they were led to the exact place of the baby by a star. All these things combined would tell them that this was a divine child. So of course they would bow down or maybe even kneel down and worship him. Also giving these gifts to a baby shows that they thought very highly of this child. For instance, one of the gifts was gold. That was a gift only fit for a king. But look, in the Old Testament, gold was brought and used to decorate in the sanctuary where God dwelt among his people. Frankincense was used in the Old Testament as one of the oils that was put on the altar of incense to burn daily before God. It says in Exodus chapter 30 verse 9 that the altar of incense was the most holy to the Lord. And here in the New Testament we see that the incense was gifted to baby Jesus. Myrrh was also very expensive oil. Mary and Joseph probably only heard of such things. Just think, Mary was such a young girl and Joseph was only a poor carpenter. I bet they never dreamed of receiving such expensive gifts. Yes, all these gifts are very great and impressive, but the ultimate gift was given to us. Even after 2,000 years, this gift is still very valuable and irreplaceable. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that, my friends, is the true meaning of Christmas. The end.